Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Play Dead, the 2023 2B original movie. So I was going to talk about this last year for Halloween, but I never ended up watching it because I got busy with all the other streaming sites that I was paying for and with them expiring within like a month or three and stuff, I had to like, you know, focus on them. So I finally watched this movie back in March and I don't know if I'm going to upload this movie now in like April or March or if I'm just going to wait to Halloween. So yeah, whenever you listen to it. And it stars that of Bailey Madison, which I've seen her in a good couple of stuff. And I'm a fan of hers. And it also stars Jerry O'Connell, who I best known for Sliders. And I'm a huge Sliders fan. And, you know, I was a huge fan of his and that. And so that's the only reason why I wanted to watch this movie. Because I told myself, you know, it's an original streaming movie. And you know how those go. Though They're not, not very good. And Tubi is a free site. So it makes you wonder how good are their movies going to be. Because when the big um, time players like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, when they make their movies, they're not very good either. <laughs> <laughs> so it makes you wonder because direct the streaming is basically like direct the DVD and we all know how those movie goes. And so I was just kind of like, uh, maybe I shouldn't watch this. I'm like, ah, but I want to see these two stars. I like <sighs> this movie is semi decent and it's semi good. There are a lot of good beats in this movie. It's just the movie's written stupid. <laughs> like, that's the only way I can think about it. Like, like I said before, there are a lot of good elements in this movie. It's just there aren't portrayed very well on screen. Like, there are some good chase sequences. It has a unique and interesting plot. Like, okay, here's the thing. If this movie would have had, like, better writing, um, maybe a bigger budget, and they would have really focused on the narrative better, oh, this movie could have been amazing. I do mean it could have been amazing. It really would have set, like, you know, a new genre of realism, like a true crime slasher type thing. But... It faltered and everything. Now this did have a limited theatrical release and it didn't make that much. It only made about $300,000 and stuff. I don't know how much the budget was, but like because the story wasn't strong enough because there was a lot of stupid elements in it that just didn't make a lick of no sense. It just, it's just a decent borderline good movie and stuff. That could have been great and amazing. Now, it is directed by Patrick Lucer. And I had no idea who he was, so I decided to look him up. Because for some reason, I just got curious. He's done a lot of good stuff. Like, he's directed an episode of Scream, the television series I like. He's worked on the Scream movies and other movies and other big name projects and other stuff like that. So he did a pretty good job in terms of directing. Like the direction isn't my problem. My only problem with this movie is some of the acting and the writing big time. It's the writing that's just kind of like, come on now. Somebody should have told you like, oh man, this don't make no sense. We work it a little bit, you know, fine tune it. And they didn't do that. And, but then, like I said before, it's the acting that kind of got me off a little bit as well, because I was very shocked and surprised. Like, okay, take Bailey Madison's character, Chloe. Now, I said before, I am a fan of Bailey Madison. I've seen her ever since she was a kid. I first saw her as the female version of Max in Wizard of Waverly Place when Max got turned into a girl. She was this scruffy little kid. But she was new to acting back then, and her acting was off back then. And I gave it a pass because she was young and this and that. 
and then I saw her in the haunting hour which she was pretty good in that but she did a little bit of overacting that's her problem at times she does tend to overact a bit more um and that's the problem in this movie like in this movie i was very shocked and surprised to see her doing so much overacting because as she started getting older in her career she stopped doing that because she was in the good witch which i've never seen so i can't even judge that but She's the main star of the Pretty Little Liars reboot, Original Sin, and she was also in the third season of The Hardy Boys on Hulu. And in both Pretty Little Liars and The Hardy Boys, she gave a really, really, really good performance and everything. And I don't remember her performance. I do remember, okay, I don't like the Pretty Little Liars reboot, but her performance was really good. And like I said, for in the Hardy Boy, oh, I just loved her performance in that. So because, you know, she has progressed as an actress and have gotten a whole lot better since she's been that of a teeny tiny little kid. Oh, I also saw her on Once Upon a Time. And she was pretty good in that. She started getting a bit older. But like I said before, as she started getting older, her acting got better so i'm very shocked and surprised to see how much overacting that she did in this movie maybe she was just like screw it i'm just gonna phone it in <laughs> like maybe you know what i'm saying because the thing is horror is up her alley she's done a lot of horror stuff the pretty little liars reboot is basically a slasher television show and she's done some horror movies in the past I've never seen them, but like she also did the haunting now, which is like, you know, R.L. Stein, the Goosebumps dude. And so this is up her alley. So I'm not sure what the heck was going on with her acting wise in this movie. Um, in the beginning, it's really bad. It gets better towards the middle and the end. But in the beginning, she's just like overacting a lot. Then there's Jerry O'Connell, who plays the coroner. And that's just his name. They don't give him a name in the movie. He's basically the little mortician type dude. And so, like, he was fine. But his character was written very weird. One minute, he's this stone cold looking dude who doesn't say anything when we first meet him. And he's just giving very glaring, very disturbing looks that make him a threat. So you get scared of him. And because he doesn't talk, it makes him even more scared. But then when they finally do give him dialogue, they try to make him John Kramer slash Flag Smasher from Falcon in the Winter Soldier. Um, what is it? Falcon in the Winter Soldier, that Disney Plus movie. And so that's so weird because they try to make him sound all philosophical and all this other stuff. And it's not working because first he went to this stone cold hysteria to now this like philosophical nerdy kind of sounding guy because jerry voice is very light sounding he should have changed his voice which jerry can do because he voiced superman in those dc animated movies the new 52 ones and stuff and he's also in lower decks that star trek show so i don't know why you know he didn't have a more threatening sounding voice but the stuff they had him say literally made no sense and because they were trying too hard to make him feel philosophical john kramer and flag smasher and stuff and it just didn't come off like realistically and stuff base and then not only that but then towards the third act then they had him sounding more like a straightforward geeky nerdy kind of um kind of like the riddler from the gotham television show a little bit where he just stands around looks kind of like uh, looks kind of like you know straightforward and this kind of like professional straightforward um precise kind of way and it's just like why did they give him three different personalities in this movie then um then like you know um you see this like almost like fatherly side when his daughter calls because like when he's about to literally kill like you know the chloe character his daughter calls and he makes her be quiet and 
he um gets on the phone chat and he's just like hey sweetie how you doing it's just like well that's kind of freaky <laughs> he went from scary to hey sweetie how you doing how's homework because <laughs> then can you see he is a family guy because you see a picture of his family and they like their christmas gear and christmas hats and they're smiling down so it's just kind of like who is this man he has like so many multiple personalities and it just comes off as kind of odd <laughs> but he's not the only person who goes through like a character change and stuff the brother tj when we first see him in the movie he's like jinky and everything like he's kind of like twitchy and a little stuttery and nervous and then towards the end of the movie he's just completely fine <laughs> and everything like what happened to the jinkiness and stuff and so there's like a lot of disconnect when it comes to that of the script and that of like the characters and stuff they just feel different from the start of the movie towards the end of the movie and stuff but then it's kind of like the writing gets even worse for that because like it's the character of Chloe because it's kind of like, uh, okay, let's, let's just talk, talk about the movie. So when the movie starts, it's basically two guys really is TJ and Ross. TJ is the brother of Chloe and Ross. We don't know this at the time, but it's her ex-boyfriend and stuff. And they're about to rob, I think, like a bank or a store or something like that. And Ross decides, hey, I'm going to bring a gun. But it's a fake gun. It's a BB gun. And TJ don't know it because it looks real and everything. TJ kind of doesn't want to do this, but Ross is like, hey, whatever. TJ is the getaway car driver. Well, things go wrong because the cops thinks it's like a real gun and they shoot the crap out of Ross and everything. TJ freaks out and drives off. And then he goes back to Chloe's place. Now, when you look at Chloe, you don't know if she's like an adult or a teenager because Bailey tends to play a lot of teenagers. So at first I assume she's a teenager, but then it's revealed, I guess she's like an adult. And so she's all like, you know, what you've been up to? And he's like, oh, I screwed up. You know, she's all like, I told you, stay away from Ross and everything. He's bad news. And he's all like, he's dead because we were going to rob like a bank or something like that. Then you see like a montage of her being upset. And then you see she used to date Ross and everything. So it's all like, oh, okay. So she used to date him, turned, found out he's like a bad dude and wanted her brother to stay away from him. And so like, oh, P.S. Why? Why, why, why the black dude gotta be like the one who wants to like rob a bank and convince his friend? Like why? And why he gotta be like a bad like thuggy ghetto boy and stuff like that why couldn't he just be a normal boy who did something slightly stupid and got shot by a cop why <laughs> why he gotta be black <laughs> and everything it's like that's really what they think like like all the people in the movie the black dude's a terrible one and they ain't the only terrible black dude it's like why why i gotta be the black person <laughs> And so, like, but we see that she did used to, like, love him, love him. Which is kind of weird, because she told him to, like, she told her brother, like, stay away from this dude. But uh, she keeps acting like she's madly in love with him and stuff. Which, this is the first time I ever saw Bailey kiss a black guy. And it's probably the first time in real life, too. <laughs> Just saying. Ain't trying to throw no shade. But, like, you know, when you look at her past, like, boyfriends and stuff, it's kind of like... Hmm, I wonder is this the first time? <laughs> so this is when the movie gets really, 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 really stupid. The reason why she has to sneak into like a uh, morgue and everything is because her brother left his cell phone with her ex. And she's like, crap, dude, since you're an accessory and all this other crap, then like, you know, um, you could do 25 years in jail and she's like, I have to protect you and everything. So she's like, we're going to sneak into the morgue and I'm going to steal your cell phone. If that's not the dumbest plot I ever heard, I don't know what is. First of all, the gun they had was fake. Two, yes, the cop shot the black dude and yeah, he died and stuff like that. But it's like, you know... 
I doubt they're gonna give him that much hard time. They'll probably give him a little something for stealing, but no, she's, she's, she has to protect her brother and everything. So she's gonna sneak into a morgue and get a cell phone. All they had to say was that her ex-boyfriend, who's apparently this ghetto thuggy boy and everything, stole her brother's cell phone. That's all they had to say. All they had to say. Yeah, maybe they saw the getaway car get away and everything, but he'd be like, oh man, that wasn't me. <laughs> That's all they had to do. But no, they're going to sneak into a morgue. But how the heck are they going to get inside? Well, this is where the movie gets even stupider. <laughs> She's all like, if I inject myself with this, it will sedate me, making it appear that I'm dead and all this other stuff. And then when I come to, I can wake up, search around the morgue and find your cell phone. And if that's not stupid, I don't know what is. And then it makes you think, well, how the heck she knows that this drug is going to do this to her? Well, later on in the middle part of the movie, it's revealed she's in college and she's some type of um, forensic medical studies or something like that. So she knows a lot about this crap. So they're like, oh, that would have been helpful to explain that in the beginning of like, you know, the movie and stuff and instead of making her look like this person who all of a sudden knows about drugs and crap like that. So yeah, she wakes up naked and she has the sheet around her and she puts on some scrubs and she's walking around barefooted and stuff. And so like, as she's observing all this and that, she sees the coroner who's very stone faced and doesn't say nothing. But then all of a sudden she sees him do something very shady. So this one, okay. It's a Latino dude. Like, okay, so okay, so the black guy is the one who wants to rob a place and the Latino dude is a guy who's buying organs. At least the white dude's the one who's cutting the organs out. So at least they did that. But seriously, like the two people of color who's terrible in the movie as opposed to one white. And so, yeah, the coroner is doing something on the black market. He's selling organs and everything. That is the part of the movie that really, really intrigued me. And it could have been like a smash hit. You know what I'm saying? This like Kevorkian type like coroner who's like selling stuff on the black market and all that other stuff, right? And so like she goes into the room where she finds her ex. But all of a sudden he is actually alive. He never died in their thing. And so she asks, like, why aren't you in the ICU? Which is a lot of people are probably asking, because if he's alive, why isn't he there? Why didn't the cops take him there? And all this other stuff. Why didn't the hospital see that he was alive and all? So that's the part also that don't make no sense. It's like the cop should have known, um, the hospital should have known, and all this other stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, he keeps, and then it turns out he keeps tons of bodies alive down there. And, you know, so the organs don't like shut down and all this other stuff. And then he just sells them. And so when she's eventually caught in there, thing, he, he is kind of cool how he captures her because she tries to free her boyfriend and he's all wobbly and stuff like that. And he gets some kind of stuff that sedates them and he ties them back up. And because he can't have no loose ends, so he's just gonna off both of them and take their organs and stuff. But just to piss her off and everything, he's gonna kill her boyfriend instead of keeping him alive. But he needs a liver because that's what that dude needs and everything. He's making tons of money off it. And so, like, he just, it's a really gross scene when he's cutting them open and wiggling all around there and takes out his liver and we get to see him put it in the box and freeze it. They really show a lot of what they have to do with the antifreeze and, you know, and the little box they put them in and stuff like that, the container. And so she's mortified, she's pissed and, you know, her, her dude's dead and stuff like that and it's kind of like, well, why didn't he try to keep him a little bit more alive? But I guess if you take your liver out, then yeah, you're going to die <laughs> in a way. But he just really wanted to piss like, you know, her off and he could have took it from somebody else. But then he stated in the movie, a lot of people that he has are like junkies and stuff like that. And he couldn't take their liver. So he needed a fresh liver from a healthier person. So that was him. So then he has to go in and do something, I think clean up or something like that, or attend to one of the other bodies and like, 
she escapes and she escapes in a pretty cool way that like i said before there's some good elements in here and the way she escapes really had you because first she gets like the um she frees her feet to scooch on over to his table and get the scalpel but then she drops it so then she takes that little saw and so i'm thinking oh crap dude it's about to get like saw the movie or rick Grimes chopping off his hands <laughs> like but so she uses it to cut the restraint and so she has to time it very perfectly unless it's gonna cut her skin and when she does it, she jolts, and then he's like, Ugh. but they're like, no, she didn't cut herself. <laughs> so that was a nice little jump scare and everything. Now, one thing is odd. When she's first roaming around the place, it's like, she was making so much noise. How the world didn't he hear her? But anyway, she escapes, and he comes back in in like a split second. So it's like, where is she hiding? So you see a bunch of like, um lockers and stuff so you assume she's hiding in there and now he's doing the whole creepy one locker by another opening up and slashing and gashing or just going through like the gap part and it's a really intense scene because you really assume she's in there and when he doesn't open one up he just puts it between like the gap of the doors he puts like a knife or that saw that hand saw in there and then it's like you see blood drip on her face so like dude what did he cut of hers and why isn't she screaming like where the heck is she he opens up all the lockers and she ain't there so he leaves the room she's hiding underneath the bed of like her boyfriend and stuff and so he's going around looking for her but then this is what gets crazy instead of like you know just getting the heck on out of there her, her brother's on the outside in the car waiting for her and everything instead of like just getting the heck on out of there she's holding her boyfriend's hand thinking about the good time like i said she's still in love with this dude even though she thinks he's bad news but what exactly makes him so bad other than trying to rob a thing it would have been nice to explore that and so like then she's touching his pants and reminiscing about that and she tries to get the cell phone because that's what she just needs and everything right well the coroner is all like all right i gotta handle this so he gets his dog and it's like a um uh, it's a cop type dog i forget what they call it, german shepherd or something like that i'm all like what is a cop dog doing there like that's kind of odd and weird you know what i'm saying and so it's trained to attack and maul people but not kill them so now we see her again chased around and she takes something to hit the dog with and so it's a nice little chase sequence and that's really nice in the movie you know what i'm saying so at some point she gets into a room and she calls her brother and she's all like you know tells him like you know instead of getting her out like just go to like another state and just, i gotta protect you no fool protect yourself <laughs> tell him to hop in that well he's already in the car tell him to bust through the door and get her on out of there but she don't do that and that's where the movie gets kind of stupid again so he decides he's gonna call the police and he wants the sheriff now the sheriff shows up one second later after the scene cuts and it's like okay that was fast and so like i'm starting to think wait right, something don't feel right where's the backup and why did the sheriff come in at the sheriff deputies and stuff the sheriff rarely ever does anything like in real life you know like crime wise and stuff so why aren't the deputies here and where's his partner and where are the other cop cars at and then i'm all like the dialogue with the cop is kind of terrible really terrible he he's starting to sound like a black cop from like the 1970s and then i'm gonna open up a can we'll pass out justice on him <laughs> i'm like what kind of dialogue is this it's like jackie brown a like, farsi brown <laughs> <laughs> but then I'm all like, wait, hold up, something's weird. The, the cop is talking 270s. He doesn't have backup. And the coroner has a cop dog. I'm like, oh, I bet you I know what's gonna happen. And it does. The cop is in on it. And so, like this one dude, the Hispanic dude said, Oh, so that's how you get these fresh bodies and stuff. And so, like the cop, like, you know. When something happens, uh, they he pretends that the body's dead, takes them to the coroner and everything and stuff like that. He gets a piece of that pie. Now, dude, there was a scene between her and the coroner where she grabs like her boyfriend's gun. And he tells, I'm thinking to myself, there's no way that gun's loaded. So why is she even pointing at him? Because they're going to take the bullets out. And plus, there are no bullets. It's a BB gun, for crying out loud. 
And so, like, he tells her, look, man, procedure says we take out the bullets and, like, the firearms and stuff. And so she shoots in a way and the BB goes in his eye. Now, this don't make no sense. He literally said protocol is they take the bullets out. Well, then they should have known that this is a fake gun and it has BBs in it. So why didn't they take the BBs out? And that's where the movie gets stupid again. Like the writing just gets stupid at times. But anyway, the cop now has like one of the little dog whistles and he's calling on the dog and, you know, he knocks the girl out and um, they take the brother and they stick him in like the basement or something like that. And then like the coroner talks to the Hispanic dude and he's all like there's been a complication and this see the thing is the coroner isn't even the boss and the cop isn't even the boss the person who wants these organs is some mysterious voice on the cell phone and the Hispanic dude is the one who picks up the organs and so like he's joking around gets a little black comedy he's all like oh you got a cop uh, working for you I want to meet this dude and everything the cop comes with a shotgun and just shoots the crap out of him why because at some point chloe takes the liver and she feeds it to the dog so she can escape so now they ain't got a liver and they ain't gonna get no money but then the cop end up shooting the carrier like a idiot and everything and it's just like um they need a liver and he's all like you know i can't get one from down below because they're all junkies and stuff he's all like well just take his liver and make the, the, the delivery drop but the dude don't know what the delivery drop is so now he has to call the mysterious dude ask for more money and all this other stuff which is just, just, just weird and stuff oh and by the way oh another person of color who is a terrible person this sheriff is black <laughs> so three bad people of color and one bad white dude Ah, that's Hollywood for you. Anyway, so they escape through the ventilation system and like, you know, they're trying to get out of there, but they can't. So at some point, she now know how to work the, the equipment in there and unlock the doors. And it's like, how? <laughs> Anyways, it's a huge fight type thing where it's kind of like, you know, it's a chase sequence, the doll, um, the cop. I forget how she kills the cop, um, but she does somehow. Um, ch -ch 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 -ch. What was it? I don't know. I forget. But anyway, the cop dies. And it's a really creepy scene when you get to the bodies below and like she finds all these bodies that she think are dead but they're alive and there's a man missing the eye and this and that now one reason why the coroner does what he does isn't just to make money remember i said they try to make him into john kramer well he says all like you know some people just don't deserve their lives and they're terrible people and i'm gonna give these organs to people who actually deserve it dude you are not john kramer <laughs> <laughs> because she's all like your brother forfeited his life when he tried to rob that place you forfeited your life when you tried to sneak into this place your dad forfeited his life when he took his own life i'm just like you are not john kramer <laughs> so then there's this cool scene with a dog um because the brother decides to hightail it and go over the gate but then the dude turns the electrical fence on so that the brother gets zapped right and so then the dog is biting the crap out of like, you know, the brother. So Chloe decides, okay, I'm really smart. If I grab onto this electrical gate, it's going to electrocute me. And I grab onto the collar of the dog, it's going to electrocute him. So there's a sequence that's about 15 seconds too long of her getting electrocuted. <laughs> and zapping the dog and everything and then the dog still has a hold of the brother so the brother's out the dog's out and she's just wobbling around shouldn't she be out from all that electrical stuff and everything but then everybody comes to within a couple of seconds that don't make no sense <laughs> so she decides she's gonna rescue that of like the carrier, the Hispanic dude, because she's a noble person. Why? It's like, girl, get your behind out of there with your brother. Hop into that dude's car and drive off. But the but the carrier is all like, yo, man, I'll give you a couple of, I'll give you like um 10 G's and everything. And she and he's all like, no, I want 20. <laughs> he's all like, whatever. If you get me out of here, I'll get you some money. So 
<laughs> and so it, the, the carrier dude's more like the black comedy of the movies. <laughs> I like the, the hilarious part. So anyways, um, like I said, it's another fight sequence between her and the coroner. This is when it gets kind of like Jackie Chan-ish because the coroner is picking up like a um, one of those bladed saws, hand saws, and he's just like trying to his best to slash and gash her and she's acting like jackie chan just bopping and weaving and ducking out oh wait <laughs> i'm like what the world man i'm like please don't do hand-to-hand -hand combat but luckily she does not she's just bucking um ducking and weaving like jackie chan from the 90s <laughs> <laughs> and so she kills him in a very cool kind of way at one point in time she took the antifreeze and she broke a lock i'm all like use that on him i want to see that and she does so like she uses it on the side of his face and then she smashes the side of his face now he's looking like two face on the other side of his face and he like uh and then the coroner um tries to stab him and gives her the knife and she stabs the coroner in the head killing him and stuff and so they all make their escape but there's only a problem the, the, the carrier is all like yo i ain't giving you no money now because i was gonna give you money if you saved my life but i returned the favor and saved your life by giving you the knife and they're all like look dude the problem is the promise and we need some money he's all like well i need a liver so, this is the twisted part of the movie. <sighs> Her knowing a little bit about, like, you know, being a coroner and medical stuff. And, because, uh, you know, when you do go to medical school, they do teach you how to do, like, surgery and stuff like that. I don't know how in-depth they teach them or how in how far she is in her studies. But then you see her at some point uh, finishing up the coroner's liver she takes it out and she gives it to the carrier and he's all like yo you need a ride i'll give you a ride like all right so they hop in the back of their car and they transfer the money into the bank accounts and he they just drive off into the sunset <laughs> i'm all like um hold up now isn't your black dead boyfriend supposed to be like a little thuggy boy and you told your brother to stay away from him because he's a bad dude and you didn't want your brother to go into jail and now here you are taking out somebody's organ and giving it to somebody. <laughs> so, like you just as bad as they are. Stuff. But then she uses the dog whistle to call it so that the dog can eat up the corner. And we see that. I'm just like, okay, that's a little too much. <laughs> I said before man this movie is just a bit on the odd like it is decent there are some good like jump scares here and there and there are some good chase sequences and stuff like that and it's a little gory but all in all the script needs some working the characters are so make unbelievable make believe and everything that I have a hard time just thinking that these people could be real <laughs> and stuff you know what i'm saying and it's just like the dialogue is terrible in the movie they, they, everybody says something so stupid it's like who wrote this movie um this would have been a whole lot darker better movie if for like you know we see like a news bulletin of like you know um people ending up like missing on the streets and you know we could probably hear the cops talking about like oh people might be transferring organs and stuff like that and who could it be and nobody knows who it could be and it's really the coroner who's working alongside the cop they have their own little operation and stuff like that and maybe just maybe um chloe and her brother could be like runaways or they just stumble upon this by mistake and so they had to cover up loose ends and it would have been nice to see the coroner more of him before this like what kind of person is he because he's like i say he's all over the place and personality wise it would have been nice if he was more of a dr kevorkian kind of way or maybe this was like a hospital like a mental hospital and he experiments on the patients they could have made this really dark and more realistic but they went for more of this like you know um 
like cheesy like cash grab of a movie that's like not really explained that well and just for cheap thrills like a cheap thrill cash grab type thing you know and so you know this movie is just like in the middle like it has elements of goodness but then it's flooded with all this stupidity and everything that wasn't that spooky all right well i shall talk to y'all later bye Ha 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 ha